the Smoky Mountains. How about that? It's pretty foggy. It's smoky. Pretty smoky. Leaves have all changed. There's Miss Hunter. What you thinking about, Hunter? I think about how my ears are popping going up this mountain. Elevation is not that high, but we're from Alabama. We're not used to any elevation at all. We usually come up here to Harris Cherokee, play a little bit of poker, check out some elk when the leaves are changing. This year we're a little bit later than that. It's December now, obviously, like mid-December. Over here, played some poker last night. Hunter dressed up like she might be snowboard. Got the beanie on, got her sweater on. Whipping the whip through the mountains. Did pretty good playing poker. Did pretty not good. Me. Not me. Hunter didn't play. I played last night. Um, got him for a little bit of money. Got him a little bit. Had a couple cool hands. Ran like Forrest Gump last night. Ran phenomenal. Kept hitting cards. Did get in some spots where I got a little bit, you know, unlucky. But can I complain as a whole? Won a decent amount of money. Played some big pots. Got lucky. River to flush in like a, I don't know, $1,600, $1,700 pot where I probably should have followed the turn. The biggest hand we played last night, we'll start with that. We have Ace King all suit in the small blind. Now, all these games are five handed at Harris Cherokee right now because of the whole pandemic we have right now. You have to wear a mask, you have to social distance as best as possible. Anyways, we're sitting at the table. I've got an action player on my right who's not a bad player. He just likes to push the action. He likes to play big pots a lot. I've played with him a few times down here and he likes to play big pots, I'll put it that way. But he's not a bad player, he just puts a lot of aggression on. So, two lips to him. He's on the button. He raises to 25. I don't know what his hand was now or later. I have no idea. But I'm in the small blind with Ace King off suit, Ace of Clubs, King of Diamonds. I three bet to 125 out of the small blind. So that we're five handed. So both people limp. Let's see. Small blind, big blind, limp, limp. He's on the button. He raises to 25. I make it 125. The flop comes. Queen, seven, deuce with the queen seven of clubs. Now, this is a board where he's gonna have pocket twos. I'm probably not gonna have pocket twos. We're both gonna have pocket sevens and we're both gonna have a fair amount of queens. So that's, you know, a kind of neutral board, but he can have one more set than me. I see bet 115, we'll go heads up to the flop, by the way. I'm not, this is my first ever hand review I did on camera. So I'm not gonna be super fluent with it, but the pot is about 265-ish, something like that. I bet 115 into 265, he calls. So, queen seven deuce, the turn is a five of clubs. So, queen seven deuce, five of clubs, three clubs out there now. I do have the ace of clubs. I check to him, and this is a, this is a spot where I probably should have check raised all in, but I check and he bets 200. So he bets 200 into a pot of like 490. So, you know, we're, I gotta call 200 to win almost 700. So I'm getting 3.5 to one on a call and I decided to go ahead and make the call because we do have about 450 behind. This is a spot where I do feel like in retrospect, I probably should have check raised all in, but that might just show that I have the ace of clubs way too often. And it, you know, there might just not be very, very many value hands I'm actually representing right there. I haven't really thought about this that much, but we are getting a decent price. So I do make the call. The, the river comes a three of clubs. So now it is queen seven deuce, a five three with four clubs and we do have the ace of clubs. So I go ahead and bet 500. He calls all in for about 400-ish, 420, 430, something like that. And obviously I show the ace of clubs and we are good. That's the biggest pot I played last night. Another spot that I got into that was a relatively big, big pot. There is a guy that I'm trying to target a little bit to my exact right. He limps, he's the first person in. He limps, I raise to 20 with pocket twos and the big blind calls and he calls. So now there's about $60 in the pot. Flop comes jack six deuce. Flop us a old sit. That is like one of the best things you can do playing deep stack poker is flop a sit. But against the guy that I'm actually targeting, we're not that deep. He's only got about, I think he had about 300-ish left at this point. So. Flop comes jack six deuce. I go ahead and bet 35 into 60, knowing I'm gonna get called a ton by, you know, a lot of one pair hands. And there's not many floats he could have, but I can imagine backdoor flush draws and stuff like that, he's, he's gonna float me with. There was a jack six deuce with two hearts. So there's a flush draw out there. So obviously can't get called by that. But 
The turn comes in eight of diamonds. So he could definitely, so the big blind folded whenever I see bet. The guy on my right called, the one that limped. He could definitely have six eight, jack eight, you know, a lot of these types of two pair hands. He could have just floated me with, you know, some kind of seven eight with a back door flush draw or something like that and turned a pair of eights. So I go ahead and size up a little bit. I bet 75 onto the turn and that leaves him with a round 200, 215 ish, something like that. So the river comes, the he calls, the river comes a 10 of hearts, which completes the front door flush draw, the obvious flush draw. So now the board is jack six, deuce, eight, 10. Lots of two pair combos now. Lots of, if he floated me with some weird, you know, kind of back door flush draws or straight draw hands, a lot of pairs got there. And he's already told me like five or six times in the small pots I won, he thought I was bluffing him. So I went ahead and bet $300. He only had about 200 ish left and he calls all in for the final 200. I think he actually had 225 left. I show the set of twos. He has five, six offsuit for a flopped middle pair and he thought I was bluffing him. So went ahead and won that pot. Also, that is a, you know, it's pretty good to flop a couple sets and to, you know, make a back, make, make wind up running out of flush in a big hand. So we got lucky in some of the hands where the, all the money went in, we had strong hands. Another hand where I won probably, I don't know, 200, 225 in. I had six nine of hearts in the big blind. It limps around, everybody limps. Flop comes 10, eight, deuce, all hearts. So we flop a flush with a gut shot straight flush draw. I go ahead and lead out here because I was at a table that was a little bit more passive. And whenever you're at a passive table, people have a big tendency to call and not to you know, bluff the appropriate amount. So even if people have the queen of hearts, king of hearts, ace of hearts, even like a, a jack 10 with a heart, people are gonna check that kind of a hand a lot of times here, even whenever I feel like they shouldn't. So I go ahead and lead out for 20 into 25, you know, not counting rake. And one guy calls, he was a middle position limper. He calls, turn comes a queen of clubs. So if he somehow did, you know, call the flop with maybe like a queen jack that's a gut shot with a you know queen high flush draw or if he had jack nine for just a straight draw which i don't think would be a great call on the flop but because there is three parts but if he did somehow have a queen jack queen nine you know type of a hand where he did have a flush draw and a straight draw or a pair and a flush draw now he's going to have two pair or at least a pair of queens so i go ahead and bet a little bit bigger here i bet 70 into you know what what is about the pot i bet 70 that's about a pot size bet because I feel like he's gonna have a ton of draws and a ton of pairs that have a lot of equity. Now, the river comes a king of diamonds. So we still have a flush. The board did not pair, very good run out. And I feel like he's gonna have a decent amount of pretty strong pair type hands. And I, I don't, uh, my read on him was he was a relatively tight player. So I bet 115 on the river thinking that, you know, if he had two pairs, it's gonna be a very difficult fold for him. If he had a straight, obviously I feel like he's gonna call whatever because I did just lead out the flop. But I, my read was a pretty tight player, so I didn't size up super big and I didn't feel like he could have too strong of a hand. So I bet 115, he thinks about it for probably 40 or 45 seconds, puts in the call. I show the six nine of hearts for a flop flush and he is visibly and verbally agitated at the situation, which is good for us. That means we're taking down this one. That's three of the bigger hands we played. We're about to go back to the casino now, finish drinking our coffee, and go jump in a game and hopefully win a little bit more money. So we won 1975 last night. Pretty good game, pretty good day of playing poker. 2-5, no limit at Harris Cherokee. Miss Hunter's driving, enjoying her Starbucks. She's gonna play tonight. We'll see y'all later, and uh, hopefully have some more big hands that go in our favor. I went over this hand a little bit in the car, but I kind of, it didn't sound good in the car, so I'm gonna redo it right here. Basically, this is one where I got into an interesting situation pre-flop and got bailed out. So basically, we're playing five-handed and the guy to my direct left, uh, di direct right, I'm on the button with pocket tens. Got my direct right opens to $15. I like down at pocket tens on the button. I like to go ahead and three bet. I make it $50 to go with pocket tens. It makes it from the button to the small blind and the small blind puts in a four bet to 125. <clears throat> kind of a smallish four bet in my opinion, you know, because he is doing a cold four bet and there's only 75 more for me to call. And this, me and this dude have played a decent amount together, so I have a pretty good feel for what I feel like he's doing this with. So, comes back around to me, the original Razor folds. I call 75 more, so we put 
you know, 125 a piece in, go to the flop. The flop is, there's about $270 in the pot, go into the flop. Flop comes 10, nine deuce with the 10 deuce of hearts and the nine of spades. So I flop tops it, pretty much a dream flop whenever you got cold four bet out of the small blind. But the interesting thing here was they got checks to me, which, you know, is probably means that he has a weaker range than I initially thought because on a 10-9 deuce board, he's not going to be checking very often, I wouldn't imagine, unless he's trying to check raise, which is a welcome sight because I do have top set. So he checks to me, I bet 125, and he tanks for a minute and then makes the call, which is extremely strange. I don't know, that's a weird way for him to play. I don't know what his range would be right here. It's, it's just a really strange hand. I don't know if maybe he had like pocket eights or pocket sevens or you know, like ace five suited or something weird with a backdoor flush draw or something like that. But anyways, turn comes the deuce of clubs. So I immediately make a full house. I'm no longer scared of a flush, no longer scared of a straight draw. There's nothing that could possibly come that's gonna make me where I'm not willing to put all the money in. So he checks to me again. And at this point he has about $500 left. So I decide to bet 125 again because I do think he just has a very weak hand right here. So this is kind of an exploitative play, me betting this small in the turn. But I just don't think he can have a strong hand because of the way he's played this hand at this time with the relative board strength. I don't think he can have a very strong hand. So I bet 125 again. He calls again. River comes the king of hearts. So now I'm just hoping that he had queen jack or ace king or some kind of a weird hand that actually has you know enough value where he wants to you know put all the rest of the money in. He has about 375 left behind. He checks to me again and I go ahead and bet 400. He only has 375 behind and he tanks for probably 30 seconds and makes the fold. So won that one, got in a weird situation pre-flop and then obviously got bailed out by flopping top set. So I have no idea what he had. The way he played his hand was kind of kind of strange and kind of different. So I have no idea what he had, but we won that one, another big pot for this night. So hope y'all enjoyed. That hand breakdown, had to get back to the beautiful Harris Cherokee hotel room and say it again a little bit better where you can hear me a little bit better. So that's it. That's the last of the hand reviews for that night. Check it out behind me. Driving through a winter wonderland up here in the mountains in between Cherokee and Maggie Valley right now. Beautiful scenery, beautiful little drive through here. You know, we live in Alabama where you don't get to see this kind of stuff very often right now i mean this is just i mean how often do you get to see something like this near from alabama almost never that's why everybody's stopping on the side of the road because they're like this is a rarity for people that live further south of here but a little bit of poker stuff sprinkled in this one hope y'all enjoyed that uh definitely fun for me i always love to get to come play poker i used to play a ton now i, I don't play much anymore because i do so much fishing so much traveling so much preparation for fishing that i don't get to play live i still play a good bit online though so pretty cool pretty fun week we're about to go back to the casino now. We'll be back there in about 15 minutes. I'm going to go play another session. So, if y'all enjoyed that, leave a like, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, and turn the alerts on because we'll have one more poker video, maybe two more, and then we'll be back to fishing, back to rigging, getting everything ready for the Bassmaster Elite Series. So, hope y'all enjoyed that, and we'll see y'all in the next one. See y'all.